Marvin Harrison Jr. may have started a trend by now participating in the NFL Combine and Ohio State's Pro Day. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We have reached a time in our sports calendar that is highlighted every single year. It's the NC2A Tournament. Round one begins today, and I hope you're looking forward to watching some good ball all day long. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Thursday edition of Locked on Buckeyes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, here on Thursday, March 21st in the year 2024. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast, and this episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. It's not normal for players that are trying to go into the NFL draft to, well, not work out in the combine and also not work out in their school's pro day. Now, there are times that guys don't do workouts at the combine, and even at their pro day, they might not go through all of the drills or the measurables, but they generally do one or the other. Of course, I prefer the combine. That's more of the official stuff. But, hey, it doesn't really matter. You do one you do, or you do another, you're checking boxes by doing those. Well, Rob Man Marvel decided this was going to be the year where he was not going to do either one. No combine, no pro day. And I ain't mad at him at all. I think that his mindset is, one, he's elite. <laughs> one, he's a top future top five pick. Some say top four pick in the upcoming draft. But also, have you watched his film? Have you watched him play? And I say this knowing this is a Buckeye podcast, but hear me out. What are some things you saw him do when he was on the field? Things you're not used to seeing. Was it once? Was it twice? How often was it? It was pretty consistent. He was consistently the best player on the Buckeyes offense when he was on the field. Now, once again, I realized Stroud was there, so I can't really say like he was the best because Stroud was there too. But if Stroud was not there, like if you really a a year ago, Stroud was a Paris Johnson Jr. and him, who was the best player on offense? You let me know. All three were good. All three are Top 10, I think Paris Johnson Jr. was a top 10 pick, I believe so. And Harrison Jr. hasn't been drafted yet, but I do believe he's going to be one. So I understand why he said, hey, no combine, no pro day. And I think his absence at the pro day, well, he was there, but it just didn't work out. It was why NFL coaches and executives did not show up. And think about this. Think about what he did at the combine. No measurables. Didn't speak to the media. But he spoke to nine NFL teams over two days. So those coaches and executives didn't have to wait till the pro day to talk to him and get a fa- get FaceTime. He gave them all the time, all the FaceTime they wanted and they needed during that event, which is great for him. They're all going to be there anyway. How about you give them what they want, which is a one-on-one spot with Route Man Marv to learn more about the receiver, the what makes him great, learn more about him, and this is exactly what they did. And I don't know if this is going to be a sign of things to come where more players that are this good are saying, hey, look, I'm not doing no combine. I'm not doing no pro day. I'll work out. I'll continue to do my thing the way that I want it to be done, but I don't have to work out in this way and run out there in my draws and stuff like that. I don't really have to do that. Why? It's not needed. No. And Ryan Roberts, NFL draft analyst, my favorite one, he's come on the show numerous times, planning on having him back on the show between now and the NFL draft in about a month from now. Ryan said it used to be, hey, you had to do something. Combine, pro day, you had to do something. And this is even announced back then by Albert Breer. I believe that's who the report was from. That said, hey, Route Man Marv, no combine, no pro day. And I am I was originally scratching my head, but it, it makes sense. Your film should always speak for you. Why? One, it does. But two, 
If your film is that good, you can dictate some things in the pre-draft process. Not everybody can. There are guys at Ohio State that participate in the, in the pro day in uh, Kate Stover and Mike Williams and Michael Hall Jr. that needed that day in a big way. Yeah, they got the film, but what does Mayan Williams have? He needs to clear the medicals. He also needs to show everybody his shiftiness and how in shape he is and all of those things. Is he fully healthy or not? Michael Hall Jr., is he over his injury that kept him out of participating at the NFL Combine? Do uh, you want to learn more about the person that many he believe in myself believe could have and should have maybe done more at Ohio State but didn't? Why not? Let's get into the mind of Michael Hall Jr. Cade Stover, is he more athletic than what we saw in the film, or is he that athletic? Is what we saw in the film exactly who he is? Now, the one thing about this is route man Marvel's out there running those routes. You're running at routes one against air and two being thrown the ball by two guys that you ain't really got much time with, and Will Howard and Devin Brown. We're going to touch more on those two guys later in the show because those are the quarterbacks throwing at the pro day for Ohio State. That's what they got. That's what they did. Yeah, it's great for you to get an early look in front of the NFL scouts in this way at the pro day. But if I'm Rob Ben Marv and I don't know y'all very well and this is on my home turf, absolutely not. Now, the combine will be the same way. Like it's not like he's catching the ball from Kyle McCord or C.J. Stroud of the NFL Combine, those are also guys that you don't know. Could you imagine him going out there doing a drill and J.J. McCarthy throwing the ball to Palmer Harrison Jr.? That'd be weird, wouldn't it? But, hey, that's the thing, or those are the kinds of things that happen at the NFL Combine. It wouldn't shock me if down the road we find out that this decision by Marvin Harrison Jr. was a trendsetter for guys that – are really solidified top five, top four picks, don't do a workout at the Combine. They don't do a workout at their school's pro day. This could be a trend, and it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't be mad about it. I just think, hey, more people should realize, I got two years, three years, four years, maybe five years of film. You can't erase it. They got it, and they, they, they know how to get it. Let's just let that speak for me. And also, this is motivated for guys right now, especially at Ohio State. Let's just say you want to put the film, put your best film out there, and all of a sudden you realize, well, my film's so good. Let's have a top five pick. I ain't got to do nothing either. Why? Because the film was just so good. That's how Marvin Harrison Jr. is. Uh, one person said, I believe it was Ryan Roberts, NFL draft analyst. I believe he ended up saying that Marvin Harrison Jr. was the best player he has ever scouted at the wide receiver position, which is amazing. That's a now Ryan was not around to scout Randy Moss, and I heard, I've heard people say like Randy was just different. Of course, Randy was different. I seen him play in the NFL. I saw him play in college. I've seen clips of him in high school with the big bat, big 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 boy shoulder pads. Randy Moss was just different, just like route man Marv. Marv's decision to not work out at the Combine, it's not a bad one. He's all right. Ain't going to hurt nobody. And really, those coaches that wanted to see him play and uh, work out at the Pro Day but didn't, they ain't going to lose no sleep by this decision. Now, there were seven other players that are drafted eligible that have entered the NFL draft at Ohio State that did work out at the Combine. Excuse me, Combine 2 at the Pro Day. We'll dive into those next as the show rolls on. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out. A team that's pushed you further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Oregon Ducks are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in the final Pac-12 tournament, punching their ticket to the big dance. They say win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what the Ducks have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, 
It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 wins. That's right. You get 200 bucks if you're a new customer in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. FanDuel Sportsbook, their odds are out, and I got some numbers for you right now. I'm going Oregon on the money line at plus 100. I'm going Drake minus 1.5, FAU minus 2.5, and, and Nevada minus 1.5. Those are all games and picks that are in the first round of the NCAA tournament, games that are played tonight. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college troops until they cut down the nets. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. There was a time that ESPN was my go-to for all sports. Was it the Twitter? Was not the Instagram? Was not the updates throughout the day? It was ESPN. And now, more than ever, I find myself not watching ESPN and not watching Fox Sports either. Neither one of them really are places I go to get my sports throughout the day. But Locked On Sports Today, this free feed all day long, Gives you the an, an, the analysis you want by analysts you can trust. And I trust the things that happen at Ohio State's Pro Day will help the Buckeyes players that participated in this event. Like I said, Rob Van Marv was one that was there but did not exactly work out at this event. There were other players, seven other Buckeyes that played at Ohio State last year that worked out in this event. Kate Stover, Xavier Johnson, Matt Jones. Michael Hall Jr., Tommy Eichenberg, Steel Chambers, and Joshua Proctor. There were also six other former Buckeyes who finished their college careers at other schools who worked out at the Buckeyes Pro Day as well. Marcus Hooker, Marcus Hooker, excuse me, Amir Reap, Jason Went, uh, Sam Wiggles. I always stutter with, and slow down with his name. Daryl St. Clair and Ryan Batch. I always have issues with his last name. Amir uh, Reap was one of those that I wish still played at Ohio State. Marcus Hooker, I understand. Hooker ended up going to the uh, Youngstown State Penguins, and other players went elsewhere. So you had plenty of players, 13 players overall participating that are draft guys. Then you had Will Howard and Devin Brown throwing the football to the receivers and the tight ends and the running backs. I think I saw – I want to say I saw G. Scott Jr. out there. Not sure if that's exactly what I thought I saw. But I do know J.C. Tumaloa and Jack Sawyer went through D-line drills with Michael Hall Jr. So you have Jack Sawyer, J.C. Tumaloa. You also have Will Howard and Devin Brown, guys that are getting an early look in front of the NFL scouts that are there, which is a great benefit for them. But the benefit for the guys that worked out, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be able to be inside the Woody. The place you are practice. While you've been a Buckeye, and all of a sudden now you have NFL scouts coming to your home on your turf to do what? Scout you ahead of the NFL draft. It's about five weeks away. It's still insane how fast things have flown by this year. At first, I was like, oh, this year's going by slow. Nope, it's going by fast. It's picking up steam. My wife and I are anxiously awaiting and getting things together for our son. who will be here in, in July. But with the way the year is going by, before we know it, we'll be here in July. And if we don't move quickly, well, the room we're currently in might not be set up for our little man when he arrives and enters the world. It's just the way things are right now, man. Things are going by fast. Oh, so fast. In this pro day, I honestly, me personally, I, I, I like watching pro days. I, I like watching the combine. I don't really take much stock. And put too much thought into what actually happens in the event on the field. I think the biggest benefit for the pro day is the conversations you have 
before and after the event with those people that are representing those NFL teams. I remember my brother, my brother went to Ball State. He played football at Butler, but Butler was a FCS school, didn't have a pro day. And I forget what connection he had, but he got an invite to Ball State's pro day that day or that year he was graduating. And he talked to the Saints, talked to the Texans and other teams that were there. Ultimately, did not get drafted, did not get assigned as an undrafted free agent. But I remember for him, it was it was huge. It was huge for him because he's at an FBS school, D1A school at the time. And what are you finding? He can move with some of the guys that are there. He can run faster. He can move as well. He's as shifty as other guys that are there that played at a higher level of football. Unfortunately, he didn't he didn't get to play fulfill his dream of playing in the National Football League, but that event for him was big. Now, for Kate Stover and Mayan Williams and others, yes, those workouts are big because they're testing you, not just testing in the measurables, what's your broad jump, what's your vertical, but ultimately they're testing you to see have you been working on getting better? Do you still have some of the same weaknesses you had previously, or are those slowly not being weaknesses, but things that might become a strength of yours? These are huge moments for athletes, huge moments for players. If my brother went into that that event at Ball State, and I was really not, I was happy to watch it, but I'm like, we on the upper level, they're on level one, we're up on level two, I believe, couldn't get down on the field to watch. And I'm like, I understand. It's y'all practice field. I understand the NFL people out there. And if they let me in, little old Jay, they got to let everybody in. But I'm like, look, that's my brother. My parents are here. Let us in. We'll stick to the side. We won't interrupt. We won't do any of those things. Trust me. I know. I understand. I, we all we all, we all, all understood the assignment. And we're not trying to break those rules at that point in time. But for the other guys, it's huge, man. It is huge, especially think about Xavier Johnson. You're doing things on air. It's not just on air and you got it's seven on seven. No, you went <laughs> literally underwear, Olympic style, compression shorts and a T-shirt. Ain't no defender. So, yes, your, your shiftiness, how well you move side to side, how much you, how quickly and how well you get in and out of breaks. All of those things on air, yes, you see them on film, but seeing it and doing it in person is huge for him. This is a big moment for the Buckeyes, those guys that, hey, maybe you're not the prospect route man Marv is. Maybe you still might get drafted, and you could do things in this event to wow people, even if there are no NFL coaches or executives that are in attendance. Who was in attendance at this event? Will Howard, Devin Brown, and those guys threw the football around at the Buckeyes Pro Day. We'll dive into the impact of that on their play this year and for their future draft prospects in the following year, potentially coming up next. This episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to find you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all of the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. This episode 
is also brought to you by our friends at Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. Billiards Plus has cues, has more cues than anyone in Ohio. They can fix your billiards woes in their shop that is on site. They are truly the best of their field. Everything you need for in-home and backyard entertainment is at Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Austin, Canada, Billiards, and more. They are family-owned and operated, and when you talk to the staff at Billiards Plus, you're going to know you're talking to an expert who won't steer you wrong. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will always go above and beyond to give you the best customer service in the industry. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Dublin such a drive in Dublin. Thank you, everyone, for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every day. Got one more show left. The Buckeyes are also playing in the NIT tournament. Throwing around the idea, haven't decided if we're going to do a postcast after their game on Saturday. But trust me, after during tomorrow's show, we'll have a definite answer on that. But the Buckeyes in the NIT, I figure, hey, why not bring back a postcast? They're playing in the postseason Diebler, 7-2 and two since leading the Buckeyes after Holtman was fired. 1-0 and oh as a full-time head coach for the Buckeyes. If they keep rolling, they might find themselves at Hinkle Fieldhouse competing for the NIT championship. Will Howard and Devin Brown throwing at the Pro Day. When I first heard this, I'm thinking, are these the best guys they got to throw the football right now at this event? Yeah. That was my thought. Was it a good thought to have? Probably not. But that was a thought. And I'm only saying this because I've seen Will Howard throw the, the football. He he can sling it a little bit. He got a big arm. That was on display a little bit at the pro day. But also I'm thinking, do I see either of these guys right now being first-round picks? Definitely not Will Howard. I've seen a, enough film on him. Sorry for getting a little bit loud there. But definitely not a Will Howard. But Devin Brown? I haven't seen enough either. Honestly, when he's been on the field, he hadn't been there very long. He's been he's been hit by the injury bug. It's not his fault that he gets hurt. I'm not going to put that on him, but it happens. A young man gets hurt. And so when I think about those two guys throwing the football, I'm thinking, well, let's see what they could do on air. And honestly, at times, there were times where I was like, Brown moves a little bit slower not as fluid, not as much velocity on the ball. And I'm not sitting here trying to take away and say, well, Will Howard, based on this workout in compression shorts and a T-shirt, he may have had a regular shorts on. I forget exactly what he had. But whatever it was, I'm not going to take away and say, oh, because of what we saw here, he's starting quarterback. But I think it was an interesting, interesting decision by Ryan Day to allow both guys to throw, not one. I know he doesn't want to give anybody the upper hand and say, hey, well, right now we're leaning towards Will Howard or Devin Brown, and we know that if he chose one guy or the other, that would have been the narrative. Okay, I just pick one quarterback. You you don't have to announce, announce to name a starting quarterback right now. Just pick a quarterback, whoever it is, and let's let him do the whole workout. Now, aside from all that and the quarterback competition at Ohio State that is not complete yet, what we realized is these two guys had a great opportunity to be on a big stage, even if it's on the turf inside the Woody. It's a big stage because they're getting a chance right now to work out in front of people that work for NFL teams, and they can take these notes back to their bosses and say, hey, we realize Will Howard and Devin Brown are not draft eligible right now, but they might be guys who need to keep on our radar for when they are. Devin Brown, when's he going to start, or will he start this year? If he does, it might be at Ohio State. It might not be at Ohio State. Will Howard, will he start this year? Will it be at Ohio State? Will he go back into the portal? There are so many different angles about this decision here. But this is great. Remember a year ago, they got Jaden Ballard was out there catching balls from C.J. Stroud. And 
people are like, oh, Jaden Bell is the next big guy. He's the next big thing. Oh, man, he's been flashing. And anytime I hear that word flashing, mainly Ryan Day and some of the other coaches too, say, oh, somebody's been flashing. I'm already checking them off as saying somebody who's not going to get significant playing time in the upcoming season. There was a report from a presser, not a report, there was a presser recently, and I forget the player's name, and they said, oh, so-and-so's flashing. Great. <laughs> he ain't playing. Why? Because I heard, I heard they, them say, C.J. Hicks, we got, they're going to find a way for him to get on the field last year as a sophomore. What happened? Didn't really happen that much. No, it did not happen. Not a bad thing. It just didn't happen. I, Kenyatta Jackson Jr., he is flashing. All of a sudden, we hear this year, Sometimes you just got to build the confidence. You got the all you got the skill, but you just got to have the confidence. So you're saying somebody's flashing, but there's more to the story. And we don't learn the entire story or more of the story until maybe the following year. Don't tell uh, Jaden the Jaden Ballard thing. Yeah, he did look good. Not, not trying to say he's a bad player. He did look good in that pro day, but ultimately. Homie didn't get on the field. And honestly, I don't know how he's going to get on the field this year either. At returner, I don't think he's a top three, one of the top three guys to return uh, options to return uh, the punts or the kickoffs. Um, I don't think he's a top five receiver at Ohio State either. So I don't know, man. I, I don't know what he's going to do if he'll enter the portal or if he'll stick it out at Ohio State and just be fine not playing. I, I personally don't know. I think he's a good. I think he can play at the Big Ten. I think there's other schools in the Big Ten that would gladly have Jaden Ballard once he gets on the football field. I don't know. I have no idea what his plans are. But the plan for Howard and for Brown was to show up and show out, and they got to display different arm angles, different throws. I remember the clip that I saw. And I really appreciate Eleven Warriors being in there, Dan Hope and the guys. I think I think it's Chase Brown. I don't exactly know all the guys that are right there. Uh, I know one of the, the recruiting guys, Garrett, he does a phenomenal, phenomenal job. But I appreciate them getting that clip, putting it out there, and just lying people that weren't able to be inside the woody there to watch some of the throws. Some of them were quick uh, flicks of the wrist. Some of them were quick slants. Some of them were deep balls. And what did you find? They got a full workout in front of NFL people. That's better than what most people can do or say during their pro day, especially during a quarterback battle, quarterback competition. Do you think most schools would use two quarterbacks in this event? Probably not. Do I think it was the wisest decision for them? Probably not either. But that's what Ryan Day wanted to do. Didn't want to show you his hands, show you his cards as far as where he's leaning right now with the quarterback competition. So he got two guys throwing the ball. It's a great stage for them. It's a great opportunity for them. And I hope that helps them build momentum for what they might do in the fall. Man, one more show left. The NCAA tournament is here, and it is upon us. Didn't do this early. Didn't want to really drop this nugget or drop these picks in the earlier portion of the show. But I got my final four picks for both the men and the women and my national champion pick for both men's and women's tournaments. Uh, final four picks for the men. Auburn in the East region. North Carolina in the West region. Houston in the South. And Tennessee in the Midwest. The final game, national championship, North Carolina versus Houston. And I got Hubert Davis's boys in Chapel Hill beating Kelvin Sampson's team. That's a really good Cougars team for the national championship. On the women's side, I have South Carolina, one Final Four participant. The other, Stanford. The other, UConn. The other, Iowa. So you got SEC. You got Pac-12. You got... Oh, I believe UConn's in the Big East and Big Ten. The final game, South Carolina, UConn. Who I got winning? UConn Huskies, Paige Beckers, Gina Oriema. <laughs> they take another, they take it another, another women's national championship trophy back to Gino's office. You can follow me on X at jstevens07. You can also send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. The NCAA tournament. First round begins today. Enjoy it. We'll see you next time.